Yes, you do need to have good bending technique even if you just play acoustic guitar. In this video, we'll talk about what bending is and how you can practice a specific exercise to help you nail your bends. Plus, we'll throw in a cool blues riff just to get this thing working for you. Here we go. Before we get started, if you're new here, consider hitting that red subscribe button to follow along with these lessons each Tuesday that come out. It's a great way to show your support and keep these free lessons coming out every single Tuesday. All right, on to the lesson. So what is bending? Well, in essence, it's this cool, crazy sound. And what's cool about it is it's very vocal-like. It's really a lot like playing a bottleneck slide in that you're not restricted to just notes at the frets. You can really get in between there. You hear the journey from one note to another. Now, how do you do it? Well, I recommend you start out by bending with your ring finger. The reason is that you'll have two fingers behind the note to really kind of give you some extra push. This requires some hand strength. There's no doubt about it. So having those two extra fingers back there can help you push the note. Now about pushing, you want to make sure that you've got good contact behind a fret and that as you push the note, in our case we're going to push up toward the ceiling, you want to maintain that steady, constant contact with the string. You can't, you know, lose contact or you're going to stop producing a note. And also you don't want to have too much pressure because that's just bad technique and it's bad for your hands. We don't want hand cramps when we play. So just get enough contact there to push through and sort of pivot your wrist a little bit. That can help kind of push that note toward the ceiling in this case. And I say in this case because you can't do that on the sixth string. You're gonna push right over the top of the fretboard. So it can be the reverse motion to bend up in pitch pull down. And again, it helps to have these two fingers there to pull down. Over time, I would encourage you to practice bending with different fingers. There are going to be times when you'll bend even with your first finger and even with your little finger. So, you know, but start here if you're brand new to bending. This is definitely the, the place where your fingers are going to help each other. Use that buddy system. Use these two fingers to push you along. Don't lose sight of the fact that you're starting from a pitch and you're moving to another pitch. I told you it's a journey in between the two, but you got to know where you're ending, right? This is something that was lost on me when I first started playing. I would grab a tab book and if it said half bend to me, that just meant, you know, kind of halfway bend it. And if it was full, I would bend it what I thought was twice as far. That's not what that means at all. It's actually bending a half step, which means target the note a half step up or one fret up, or it means a full bend is a full step, a whole step, or two frets from here, bend up to here. But you're targeting those pitches. And we'll talk about some microtonal bends in a little bit that are really handy in the blues. But when you're going for a note, you got to make sure you nail, you nail it. And one way to do this is to use this exercise. And this has been very helpful for me. You want to start at a pitch. Let's start here at this E note on the second string. And you want to bend up. Let's practice our half step bends. We'll start with this E note, fifth fret, second string, and we'll bend up to the sixth fret here. That's an F note, a half step above our E. So we want to play this F fretted. Get that pitch in your mind. Hold it there. Because what we're going to do is go back to the fifth fret and bend up to this pitch. We're going to bend through, and once we hit this, you'll hold your bend there. Pluck it again, and then come back and check. See how you did. So it's kind of got its own little system of self-check built in, and that's what I like about this. If you want to get really crafty with this, you can use an open string. Really close to us, we could bend up this E flat to E. Get that E in your mind. When you think you're there, pluck the open first string. And you should hear that sounding two E's. That's probably a really good place to start this exercise. But the point is, play the fretted note so that you have your target in mind and then bend up to that. 
Now, the next thing that I want you to do is to take this to another level. Instead of bending and hearing the bending, just play your fretted note and then bend up without plucking. Bend to where you think that F is and then hit the string and then test. So what you're gonna do is find the spot on your guitar Too sharp. That was pretty close. And once you find it, repeat it, wear it out. Just go back and forth between this pre-bent note where you've bent, you've done the movement without plucking the string, then pluck the string. That was too sharp. Way too sharp. There we go. And then come back and fret it to check yourself. And you'll make little tiny adjustments, just like I did right there, to make sure that you're playing the right note. And here again, you can use the open string. If that helps you, just bend up before you hit the note. That's next level stuff that really helps you to know and get your fingers and your muscle memory to know where that note is, how far you have to bend to hit a half step. Now the next thing is you'll want to take that same exercise and apply it to a whole step. So instead of bending from E to F, you could bend all the way up to this F sharp. You give that exercise a go and it's going to give your fingers a little bit of a workout, but it'll also really test your ear's ability to hear these tiny little differences in pitch. And that's going to help you in a million different ways on the guitar. Okay, there's one more type of bend, a microtonal bend that I want to show you in a second. But right now, let's stick with those half step and whole step bends and have a look at a couple of examples of pitches that you should bend. I'm going to come at this from the key of E. So E are one and then we've got F sharp would be our two G would be our minor third okay and we can bend that F sharp up to G we probably don't want to do it there but we could come up here there's our one here's our F sharp we could bend this up to that minor third with a half step bend and it sounds pretty bluesy. So we could bend from the two, meaning the second degree of our E scale here, and bend up. If you do that in a lick, it's gonna sound pretty cool. You're approaching that all important minor third from a note below, a half step below, and you're bending up, rising to that note. There's a short little lick just to show you how cool and groovy it can be to take that two and bend it up to the minor third. So that's a good way to practice and put into use your half step bend from the two to the minor third. Now another good bend to have in your back pocket would be bending up the flat seven up to your root. Okay, so in this lick, we bent up from this D note, which is the flat seven, up to the E. So that's a full step bend. And you can bend that flat seven up to your root anytime. It's gonna sound pretty good if you're working in a minor pentatonic blue situation. So give that bend a shot when it comes to bending with that whole step bend, all right? What we did there was bend up and travel through that note from D to E and then hit that E. And that's gonna sound really good. All right, there's one more type of bend that we're gonna cover. It's very important to the blues and it's called a microtonal bend. It's some bend that is less than a half step. So we don't have a pitch to bend to, but what we do is start with our beginning note. Let's go back to this D here on the first string. Right, and we'll come back and play that with our ring finger. And we can do a microtonal bend that wouldn't quite reach that E flat. And a lot of times you hear these kind of get to the top of the bend and choke out. So that's why I'm returning my finger to the string to mute it out. But if we held it, it just sounds slightly sharp. It's not all the way up a half step. It is just slightly sharp. But if you don't hold it there and let that note sound really sharp and out of tune, mm -hmm. 
it can have a really cool vocal-like effect. We're just kind of carrying that note, just putting a little edge on the note. I use this far more than the full step bends or even the half step bends. This is one you've got to get familiar with. It's a little bit harder to practice, but I would tell you to spend some time just practicing pushing a note sharp till it sounds good to you and then coming back and locking down on it with your hand to mute it out. Get to the top of that bend, make sure it's less than this in distance and just get that crying sound going. That's what we're looking for with these microtonal bends. All right, now let's have a look at a cool example that puts that microtonal bend to work. All right, so what we're doing here is really working this minor third coming at this from E, so our G is in a minor third, and we're pulling it slightly sharp a lot in this little rhythm groove, something that should sound kind of familiar and definitely bluesy to you. So we're just pumping the bass a couple times, and then doing that micro bend on the G. We're never getting to this G sharp, okay? That's going to sound a little too clean, a little too major in this case. We want something a little bit dirty that just doesn't sound quite in tune. We're moving toward a note, right? I told you this is a journey. We're moving from this G to something else, but the fact that we don't get to the G sharp kind of builds in the suspense in this groove. And what we're going to do is pick this E octave at the top of our quarter bend here, or microtonal, again. And we do it again as we come back through to end the little rhythm cycle. So that's just the E, the D, and then we come back, and I am kind of snapping the string outward to get a cool vibe happening here. But then I'm pulling the G sharp, pulling the G note sharp out of tune, and then coming back and popping that string to start all over again. All right, so that's a short little blues groove that puts that microtonal bend to work for you. We're just bending this G slightly sharp and working through the rest of the groove. You can take that little nugget of an idea and expand on it, and I'm sure you can come up with something really, really cool. It's a classic blues sound, and the microtonal bend there, is definitely adding to it. So have fun with these bends. Be sure to go back and practice the exercises where you bend up to a half step or a full step bend, but you know the pitch that you're going to. This is a little more gray, these microtonal bends. But I think it's very important to build up good technique, knowing the pitch of where you're going, and then we can get a little sloppy in a good way with these microtonal bends. And before you know it, this will sneak into just about any lick that you come up with on your own. Super useful, super bluesy, and I hope you dig it. Don't forget to subscribe if you dig this. Hit the thumbs up if you like this particular lesson. Come on back next Tuesday for another acoustic blues focused lesson, and I'll see you then. Until then, play on.